So I'll start recording. Uh, so now we're going to go through f front end and we're going to start with screens. Actually, I'll just let, let you keep going, Kian. Uh, okay, cool. So I'm just going to show you. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Can you? Yep. And just, uh, just bear in mind, guys, that this looks like it's, uh, looks like PyCharm, but actually is Android Studio. So it's something a little bit different. Yeah, so this is Android Studio, but obviously you can use other tools like uh, Visual Studio. Yeah, so other tools that you can use, but right now I'm just, I just use Android Studio. So uh, yeah, so last, just then you guys learned about um, building the backend. And right now I'm just going to um, gonna see see me like coding how to do, how I can build this, um, the front page as well. So the top bar, so this, the top red, um, bar we call it app bar and then I'm just going to show you how you can build that and then um, navigations so if you click this pop-up menu here it shows you other options and you can kind of go to each option here and yeah so logo and then a few options to click and then the app bar and um, the body content here so two data tables and one for the winners the other one for losers and you can uh, buttons for you to load more data so I think the current um, numbers I set um, would be 100, not too sure, but if you kind of load it up to 100, um, the button will kind of disappear because you can't load any more data. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, yeah, so yeah, so you can see that um, once the data is all loaded up and uh, we won't have a kind of load more button here. So that's a bit of logic set. Um, we will include in the script and yeah so obviously you can do the same for um, you know losers as well to see losers data and yeah if you click more you will load more data and lastly I'll kind of show you the um, button kind of banner here and then um, with the links to go to other pages and yeah just kind of terms and conditions and privacy policy sort of things and yeah, so first I'm just going to show you how I built this page. And second, I'm just going to show you how I do or manage the themes. So for example, um, it's like the colors of, let's say, um, this text here, like um, screen, you want it green, and then how big or how small you want it to be. And is it, uh, do you want a specific font? Or yeah, so just kind of themes and how I normally do themes in Flutter. And yeah, and then it's the color white. And then if you expand and the color is this and the logo, what kind of background of the logo um, you want. And that's the theme. And after themes, I'll probably go through um, what we call responsive design. So um, that's generally like kind of important um, if you want to build a website because um, if people's on a phone and then browsing your website, you want to make sure that your page looks uh, nice on mobile and also on desktop and on tablet, uh, different kind of um, sizes. So, so if I, if I kind of minimize this, right, you can kind of see that this right now we on um, like kind of white screen, but if we kind of decide to shrink, right, so this um, changes based on the, the screen size. So this is what we call responsive. And you can kind of see that um, from the white to the kind of the middle layout here, the layout is actually um, it changed from that um, big, right? It shows all the options, but right now it's um, it changed to different design. And yeah, so it kind of has these drawers here. You open the drawers and it shows you um, the navigations. So this is what we call responsive design here. And hopefully, if we have the time, I'll kind of um, talk about navigation as well. So how you navigate from a page to different to another page. So, so for example, if I click this, right, it takes you from the home page to this page. And if you cl click some buttons here, buttons, you know, like contact us, it will take you from the cut detail page to the contact us page. So yeah, so I'll just get started. Um, Go back to the home. Um, yeah, so it's quite a lot to take in today. Um, and um, kind of a pre 
knowledge is you have to have um, kind of that uh, knowledge, but if you don't, but uh, I guess it's fine. Pretty easy to follow along, hopefully. Um, let's just, let me just start a brand new um, project. So if you use like Android Studio, you can just follow this uh, instruction to create new project. So first you go new, new project. Uh, no. So go if you want to be Flutter, that's a new Flutter project option here you can choose and just specify your SDK next. And then just got tutorial. Um, yeah, finished. Um, I just want to launch a new window and now we just have a brand new Flutter project um, open up here. So yeah, uh, right now we're not doing any testing so you can completely, you can just delete this folder, test folders, and then I'm just going to go ahead deleting this, um, delete. So all the main, all, the, all your scripts will be in this lib um, folder here. So if you go, if you open up main, um, it will show you kind of the default Flutter app. It's just a, a counter. And if you click a like a button here, I'll just actually run it for you to see the default. And yeah, if you want to run, let's say, um, a web app and you just kind of customize this and click this Chrome web option here and then hit run and you will actually run the website um, locally. So let's just, and yeah, so before I mentioned about um, building app in Flutter, so you can kind of build your Android and iOS as well. So if you pick your, um, the correct emulator, yeah, you just, and then you can kind of add your own iOS phone here and then just um, use, pick that and then hit run and it should give you a nice kind of um, mobile applications or your app. So yeah, this is the default Flutter app and it's just a floating button here. And if you hover over here, it will kind of give you the a nice um, text. It's what this button is about, it's about um, incrementing the this button here. So if you click one, two, three, four, five, see this, it's just gonna update the number. But yeah, so we will kind of um, close this. So, yeah, I'm just going to delete everything here because we want building, uh, we're not building another counter app. So, um, yeah, so the top at the top level, right, um, you need to have this main because Flutter will look for this main and will run the code inside. And then in, in this main dart file, um, you need to have a main function here. And inside this, this curly bracket, um, yeah, it just, whatever logic you want and you, you can put in here. But normally, um, all you need to do, just one line, just say run app and then you give a whatever app you want to run. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so now I think we will build the top bar right here as a start. Oh, let me just go. Yeah, so we first we will um, build this app bar right here and then with the logo and this, um, options navigation here. So, yep, yeah, um, yeah. So my app, you need to create your class, my app class. So I just go ahead and create this. Um, oh, no, let me show you one trick. Um, so if you wanna, let's say, I, I don't know if we, Visio Studio has this, but Android Studio has a, a quick way to create a uh, class. So, in Flutter, there's a new concept called um, like is it is your widget a stateful widget or stateless? So stateful means that um, the state of the of your widgets um, changes based on your logic. So for example, um, just then the default I deleted, but the default um, Flutter app that that was a stateful widget because um, the button or the numbers number change right um, when you click the uh, floating button. So if you click the floating button and the numbers will be updated. So that means a stateful widget. 
So the state of the app um, can you know can change based on some logics. But state stateless is that you know is will always be the same. So it doesn't matter um, how many times when you load it, right? The color is still the same, um, the font size is still the same. But let's say if you want um, that color to be green when um, users click something else, like click the button, and then that button will update the color of a text, let's say green or something, that will be an example of a stateful widget. So, but um, the main, my app is a stateless widget. So we just go ahead and then create a stateless widget and then just give a name, my app. Yep. So this is the standard, um, Syntax or yeah, syntax how to create a stateless widget. So you just go do SD and then hit stateless. It will create um, that kind of uh, scaffold for you. So yeah, um, right now and then the build section here is actually uh, it will build your all your um, logics and widgets and container. So in Flutter. You can kind of see that if you're coming from, you know, the JavaScript or um, HTML kind of uh, background, right um, here in Flutter, we won't be interacting with, you know, uh, HTML, JavaScript, which is kind of nice. Everything is just, uh, everything is widget. So you have a container widgets and yeah, you can specify, you know, the color, the decorations and yeah, a lot of whole lot of things here. So if you want a text, right and then text is also another widget here it's called text and then uh, you can kind of play around and then have a whole lot of other parameters that you can put like uh, the data so what sort of text you want to um, type and then these styles like colors font size font weight and yeah it's a whole lot of things so everything is widget which is kind of nice and you won't do any like javascript or html um, work here. So yeah, let's just go ahead creating um, the, the main app here. So I just go. materials app. and then title. Let's just give it tutorial and then home. I just give it home. So we haven't created this, but um, a material app is kind of the uh, scaffolds of the whole thing. So yeah, so everything. So from the, this, from the top here up to the bottom, everything is wrapped in a material app. So you need to have this. If you don't have this, and then just use a, you know, a container like this. Um, you will get an error. So it needs to be a material app. Yeah, and then so within the material app, you can customize it. So yeah, you can give a title. Um, what else? Yeah, so initial routes, you can give it initial routes. So if you don't like the main um, homepage here, you can just kind of say the initial routes and then just give it a string and you know, let me just check yeah so it's a string and then you just do like home or another page or something like this so when your app uh, launches it will just go to this rather than the default one so right now you just go to the home page when the app uh, launches itself so um yeah so like, that's pretty simple the main is just run app and run my app and then my app will just return this material app and then it will have if it, ha it will have the titles tutorials and then the home page which is this home and we will build this right now um cool and then before that i'm just gonna create a couple of folders here so first folders uh, will be views and then next one will be widgets which is great Cool. So, um, what a view is basically a screen or whatever you want to call it. You can call it a screen or a view. So this is a view or screen. And if you go live counter, this is another screen. 
So yeah, I would just like to separate the two and then um, the building blocks, all right, so this container here and then the blue container here, these are widgets. And then this dies here is also another widget and all this will sit, you know, it's on the widgets folder. And views will just basically um, import these widgets, right? And then to build this whole nice uh, kind of page that will surface um, to the users. So yeah, and then first I'll just create um, another folder uh, for the app bar. So just create another folder under widgets, right? Because we will save all the widgets related to app bar in this folder here. And then, um, then this home, right? This home page, uh, this home page, we all import, you know, it's all this uh, widgets from the widget folder and then I'll, I'll show you in a second. So yeah, app bar, and then first we will create dot file. Um, I'll just kind of name it app bar white layout. Cool. Um, first we will import the material uh, library. So that's just a standard Flutter library. So, if you want to use all your um, all the containers, um, the widgets from Flutter, you have to import this. This is a standard library. You have to import. And again, um, yeah. So, back to that point that I raised just then: stateful and stateless. So here, the app is stateless. Okay, the state doesn't change over the lifetime of the app, right? So it doesn't matter if you if you um, change the screen size, you can see that the app bar, um, the color, everything is still the same. Doesn't um, the it's not like one of the navigation button uh, will kind of expand or shrink based on the screen size. Everything is pretty static, right? So we have to create um, static or uh, stateless widget here. And again, the trick to create a quickly create a stateless widget is to just use the trick here. So let's type st. And then create this, and I'll give it a name. I call app bar. And yeah, so we have created a app bar white class and extends the stateless widget class. And we will just um, populate this, and the Flutter will build um, that app bar section for us. So yeah, to build app bar. You have to use um, another widget called app bar widget, and if you hover over um, the name, it will give you a whole lot of parameters that you can include. So leading means that um, if you have any leading widget here, so leadings mean here. If you want your logo to be leading, right, you can use that, um, and the pram or oh, the the object is a is a widget object, and title is also a widget, and actions is a list. Um, elevations is double, so if you want your app bar to be elevated, so you can specify um, tense. That means that you can kind of see the contrast. Um, I'll just show you, and a whole lot of parameters you can specify here, and yeah. So now we just build this. We will set background. So first parameter. We will use its background and then you can specify um, in Flutter that's built in um, color list. So you can just pick any color you like. So I'll just go ahead and pick um, orange. So that will be the background color. And center title. So this takes in Boolean. Right. So you can have over. If you're not too sure, you can have over. It's Boolean. Right. So it's true or false. Um, let's say if you want this. The whole section here to be at the center. You can hit. Uh, you can just say true. I think the default is false. And if you don't want it, just um, I think it's small. Yeah, if you don't want it, just comment it out. But we just do it with the center title. And yeah, icon theme. 
So icon means that if you have any icons here, um, yeah, you just set the themes to be whatever you want to set. So which is icon themes if you have over this and accept um, object called icon theme data, right? So we go ahead, just put that in. And if you hover over this again, um, you can specify the color, the size, opacity. So right now I'm just gonna customize the color. So I'll just do it white. And, and yeah, some other stuff that you can customize the, in terms of the, the styling and stuff. But right now I'm just gonna build the title. So title accept um, widget. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a, a row widget here. This is another widget. So this means that you're going to build some things um, in a row like this. So this is a row and then um, this data table here, this two are in a row. And if you're going to focus on this daily, let me just, Like this so this is a column right but yeah so you have one widget here another widget right second widget and then third widget they are in the column and if you want to put something um, lay something out like this you will actually use a column widget here like column widgets and then you specify your children and then and then widget one so like widget one and then your widget two, and then your widget three. So they will be um, in a column, so like this. But if you want, um, if you don't, if you want a row, then you can use a row widget, and then you specify your children. So one, two, widget one through three, four, and so on. But um, if if you look at the app bar right here, is is in a row, so we will use a row widget. So choose a row. So yeah, cool. And then children. So if you look at this, the first one's a logo and the second uh, widget is the top movers, navigations, that one sets, which is a pop-up menu here. And then if you click this, it will show you other options. And then next one is a logging, sign up, live counter. So yeah, um, first we will create the logo. And to create a logo widget, again, you go to the widget uh, widgets folder and then just create a new data file just call it let's say a logo cool and again logo is um, another stateless widget so we just go ahead create stateless widgets and let's just say let's name it logo like this and yeah, I see lots of errors because we haven't imported the standard library, which is the Flutter material dot. Okay. So, and uh, within the logo, let's just um, create circle avatar because if you have a look here, this one is actually a circle avatar. So we would use, that's a circuit avatar widget. So we just use a circuit avatar widget here. And yeah, background, you can customize. Again, if you have over, you can see a lot of parameters you can use. So background color, you can set the background color to whatever color you like. Um, background image, if you have any, and then foreground image, and so on. Radius, um, how big or how small the circle you want it to be, and the minimum radius, maximum radius, and so on. So for now, I'll just set the, um, background color to white and then the child um, I'll just use another widget called clip um, oval and the child is will be an image so if you want um, yeah if you want to use your own image then what you have to use is image.assets so this will basically grab um, your image from a file path that you specify. So a file path here, like this. And yeah, and a lot of uh, parameters you can customize as well. So um, width and height and the scale 
and color and so on and the fit uh, alignment and so on so but let's just in, um, add the logo here so to add logo to your flutter first you need to create an asset folder so let's just go ahead creating asset folder um, so go new directory So yeah, assets and then let me just import that logo. Um, just tutorials, go to assets and then just copy this and then put it in here. So now um you can see that under assets we have this uh fat fox logo here and that's still uh that's one more step you need to do to be able to use that image so you need to go in this yaml file and you need to go go to this um under flutter and you need to uncomment this So if you named your folders uh, differently, if you um, let's say you give it asset two name, so here you have to do whatever folder name name you uh, you gave to the folder. So if it's folder name asset two, you have to say asset two. So this is your folder name, but I name it asset. So asset, and you have to put a um, backslash because you can specify. You know you can do this logo dot jp jpg. You can do this. So what this would do, it will Flutter will only import this rather than the whole everything's within this within the asset folder. But if you want Flutter to import everything in the folder, you just uh, delete this and then you can just do this. So it will import everything into your Flutter app. So now uh, we have set this and then you have to rerun. So run this pub get. So it will just get the um, the latest items. In the folders in assets folder so now this is done and yeah we can just specify the file path right so it's in the assets folder and then fatfox logo dot jpn like this and yeah and i actually want to customize it a little bit so I'll just do um, box fit dot cover, and I'll just give it a scale zero point five. So you can do whatever scales that you want, but this is what I want to do. Um, yeah, and if you want a padding, so padding is also a widget in Flutter. So if you want to include a padding, um, yeah, so wrap with padding so you can go here padding padding and then you can specify so um, all means that you're going to insert a, uh, a width of eight paddings around the circle avatar and you can do um, only if you want so only means you know if you want um, paddings on the left so you can specify left and then give it um, like eight right eight um, padding of eight on the left and if you want to write as well you can kind of put it as well so like this but round we're just gonna you know, do paddings on all four sides so you're just gonna do all and then do 8.0 um yeah so basically that's it for our logo widget here so, so this little thing here is a circle avatar, has a padding of eight around, and the child is actually a an image, a fat fox logo image. So, which is this this boy right here, and yeah, and then the background of the circle avatar is white. So, and yeah, we have our logo widget here, and we can use that in the app bar. Yep, in the app bar. So. 
back to logo this is done and then we're gonna import um, that logo that file in so import um, uh, tutorial that's the name of the project tutorials and the logo is under you know it's within in widgets so we go widgets and it will go logo done and yeah so first thing right in in that the whole sections app bar in the app bar the first one's the logo and if you want to include that all you need to do just just yeah there you go you have a logo in the app bar and yeah so normally it's a good practice to put a constant right this means that um when your app is built or is uh yeah it's built then you, you get that performance uh kind of nice performance here if you if you don't include constants then yeah every time when you refresh your app uh, it's gonna rebuild that logo widget class but if you put a constant it would just use that same instance every time when you refresh so it won't rebuild which is pretty nice um performance um advantage you can get there so yeah now as we have the logo widget class and we just go ahead building top mover sets login sign up and live counter the rest and yeah before i um you know one thing you can do obviously you can create a file for each let's say um, a dot file for top movers like this and then another stateless widgets right and then in here you can say text and then top movers then you import this top movers all right in this file and then you just say top movers right and yeah you can do this and then you can do the same thing you can repeat the step and then do it for the rest but it's generally not a good idea to do this because yeah if you want to add a new navigation here you're just going to create another stateless widgets which is kind of painful so I'm just going to do my way. Um, first, let's just create a config folder. So configs will save all the configurations for your app. So let's just, and yeah, in the configs, I'll create another folder, another dot file called um, app bar, nav configs. Okay, so what this file would do, it will save the metadata of your um, navigations. So let's just create a list. Um, titles is a list, right? So in, in Dart, you have to specify the types. For example, if it's a list, right, you have to specify it as a list and what is inside the list you have to specify the type so in this list i will uh, save dictionary what you call it. so dictionary in dart is map so it's a dictionary um dictionary with strings and dynamic dynamic just means that the the type can be um can be dynamic so it can be string can be uh double can be a float can be anything so if you just if you don't have a standard or if the type is not static so it's different every time you just do a dynamic type here and so title so the first navigations is top movers top movers and the route name um route name is just blank let's just put a blank and pop up menu okay so the first one false because it doesn't have any uh pop-up so but the set navigations would have a pop-up so i'm just gonna copy this and then copy another you know four times right and then the next titles will be sets and pop-up menu is true and if it's true then you will have a pop-up item pop 
menu items. So it is a list, right? A list of dictionary. And in each dictionary, it will have a title. And then also route name. So let's just give it a blank for now. And I'm just going to copy the same thing. Just put a comma. Um, yeah, so this will be this section here. So one, two, three, four, five. And you can just give it whatever name. Let's just say, um, let's actually do option one. Option one, you'll kind of see this in action later. Option two, let's just do three options for now. Now we're done with the second navigation button, move on to the third one. So third one is what? Logging, sign up and live counter. So we're just going to do, change the title to logging, change the title to sign up, and change the title to live counter. So why this is good is because let's say if you want to, um, add another navigation button here all you have to do just go here go to this file and just you know copy this and then insert another dictionary and then just call it whatever you like a new title and then uh, yes change this to true if it's if it has pop-up menu and then um, add this pop-up menu items here and that should be it if you want to add a new navigation button so compared to the method one right where you have to create a new dot file right and then import this so this is a lot more robust the way it's set up um yeah and now we have this app bar navigations co configs here and we're actually going to import this and then just going to do a for loop right so loop through all this and then create for each one we use um widgets right to build all this each section here now we just go ahead and we're going to import. So this one is configs appa configs.file, right? And here in dot um, to do your for loop. So do your for loop is just, you know, for variable data in titles. So titles. If you name it, you know, titles with the, I don't know, like one, two, three, right? Here you have to do one, two, three, one, two, two, something. So we're just going to look through um, the title list and so this um, in dot is pretty much similar to uh, append in Python. So you just, it's a list and then you append or you add this list to this big list right here. So at the end, it will just be a giant uh, one list and with the widgets inside. So here, if you want to expand or add a list to the big list, you just do the six uh, stint tag here. So three dots and uh, a list. And yeah, now we will do, we will have a class to handle um, the navigation here. So let's just call it menu handler and we have to pass in data. So what this menu handler would do, so first it will just check if it's a pop-up menu. Uh, if it has a pop-up menu, if it has, then it will kind of point it to other widgets. If not, it will use you know another widget. So it's two different widgets it will manage here. So um, yeah, that's done. And now we're just gonna quote this menu handler bit. Um, cool, and then menu handler, I'm just going to create another dot files um, in appa folder. So let's call it menu. Menu handler. Okay. Um, cool. And menu handler, of course, um, anything like everything is a widget, right? So you have to go stateless. Let's call it menu handler. Again, you have to import the standard 
library. So I just go import here. Cool. And yeah, so that's just container. Container is just a container. And you have to specify the child. And I just put it empty. So it has to be, you know, a widget, right? A widget object. So if you just put a string, it will raise an error because that's not the right type. But before that, um, you can kind of see that menu handler accepts a parameter called data, right? So of course we have to add this parameter here. So how do you um, create another parameter is yeah. So if you wanna if you want a class or widget class to accept parameters, you have to add your parameters in this curly brackets. Um, give it a name, right? Data. And after this, you have to specify the type of your parameters of your, yeah. So the type here is a map or dictionary. And yeah, so now you see an error it says, um, yeah, the default is now, right? And data can't have a now because if it, if it can be now, so you have to do, um, a question mark here. So this one just means that this data can accept uh, map type and also none or null. But if you delete this question mark, so it will always be the, the type of the um, data will always be map. So require. So require just means that, you know, anyone or any dot files um, uses this one will need to pass in the data parameter or data to this menu handler class but now we have this setup and yeah we just need to use the data so data just means you know if I just split, split this up and data means just this each dictionary is a data so this is a data and then this is another data and then this is another data so and data here we just do if our statements here so data Menu, right so that this is the kind of dot syntax here so you give a function oh it's not functions but you your conditions um, so your conditions and then you have to put a question marks and this is the true or your logics when the condition is true is true right and then you have to put a, a column here and then you put in your logic if it's false, something like this. So data pop-up menu, if it's true, all right, we just gonna surface this single pop-up menu like this, right? If it's false, we're just gonna do simple, um, single simple menu like this. So if it's true, so everything else falls except this second data dictionary is true, right? So the first one, uh, when we pass the first one in, right, it's false. So it will go to this, this uh, widget class here. And then the second, it will go to this single pop-up menu here. And now we're just gonna create, you know, uh, the class for each. So we go ahead, create this in app bar folder. So you're just gonna call it pop up menu dot file and you create another one. Let's call it simple menu. And again, pop up menu, you kind of guessed it, is a stateless widget. And let's just call it single pop up menu. So the name here has to match up with this, right? So whatever name you call it here, you're just gonna import and use whatever name or so, and then you're gonna do the same thing for simple widget, uh, simple menu, stateless again, um, single, simple menu. And again, you have to import that standard library. Let's just import that up there. Okay. And again, Right, we have to know the titles, right? What titles and then, yeah, titles and so on. So let's just do the simple menu first. 
So a simple menu again will accept the data. So this dot data, and then we want it to always be set. So you put a required means that um, whenever you use a single simple menu, you will always need to pass in data and give it specify the type. The type is map and data. And you're done. So you can just use the data um, inside your build function here. So, and this is another widget, right? In Flutter, is called text button widget. So let's just go ahead. Um, let's just import that. So text button, you need to specify the on press. On press is a function. If you hover over, right? It requires means that you have to pass in. And yeah, functions and is a functions. And void means that it shouldn't return anything. Right, so, but now we just, I just put this and it's just an empty, empty function here. And then the chow, which is not gonna do anything, right, if you press the button. And then the chow, uh, the chow is a text, right? And then the text, we're just gonna use the data and then get the titles from the data, right? This is dynamic programming. So you kinda, um, yeah, and then to string. So let's just make sure that um, this one is a string because text, right? If you go to the data, you need to have, the type is always string. So it should to strings, just make sure that it's a string every time when you um, read this data here. And yeah, and style, you can kind of style it however you want. So again, that's another widget here for style and then it's called text style. And you can, you know, a whole lot of other parameters you can specify color, background color, font size, weight, and so on. So now I'm just gonna pick a color. Whatever, I just pick a white. And then font size, I'm just gonna do 17. And then weight, I'm just gonna do font weight, and then 300. And this is kind of a warning or suggestions, right? It says prefer constant. So if you just, cause this one is, it computed before it compiles, right? So constant means that um, if you have a variables that can be compiled, calculated before um, it is compiled, then you just add a constant in the front. So just a general um, a good practice to do it. So yeah, and now, right? So go back to this, right? If it's true, then we just go to the single simple menu here and sim sim single simple menu accepts one parameter data and you have to pass in you know, data here. So data, data, but we have to import again the, uh, the data file. So just go import so package tutorial widgets, right? And then it's app bar, simple menu. Right, you can see that. So pass in, we uh, pass the data to the single simple menu and um, we're just the, in the build sections it will be a text button and then the title will be uh, whatever title you set here okay so that is done for um, the first dictionary uh, anything when the pop-up menu is false and right now we're just going to code the when the pop-up menu is true which is the pop-up menu stateless uh, widget class um, so in here, right, since it, it is a pop-up menu, right? And yeah, that's a pop-up menu widgets, of course, in Flutter. So pop-up menu button. Um, yes, pop-up menu button right here. And so item builders, item builders actually, uh, it takes in the list. Right, a list of uh, function here, but right now we're just gonna do context and 
is going to do a uh, for loop because we have to loop through the pop-up menu items, right? And then surface each of the option. And we're going to do for loop. So for loop, we're going to do for variable item in um, data in the list. And again, right, we want to append or add this whatever items in the list to this big list or well, we would do this syntax here but before we do that um, again we have to import at this parameter so just go require this dot data and again you have to specify the type like this then you can just use this data in your build section here so yep and then for each one right so for each option here it is a pop-up menu item but if you're not sure you can just google um yeah or go to the flutter official website it will just uh, lay every all the widgets for you and this one takes in a child right a child of course if you just want the text you just use a text widget and yeah then the text is just right the items inside the items is the title right we just go here and extract the title <clears throat> and make sure that is a string else we'll raise an error right just to string that's just titles and of course you can customize it customize the style and if you want to do that right you just comma style again you use the text style widget from flutter and let's just say give it a color, um, colors, whatever, black, like this. Um, yeah, so you can see that we have a for loop here, right, to surface um, for each one is a pop-up menu. And that is just um, to build the whole pop-up button here. So this whole thing here. Okay, item builders build this thing. And then for each one, it's just a pop-up menu item. And again, right, you have to put a constant. Um, yeah, and pop-up menu item, of course, um, has an on tap function here. But for now, I'll just make it nicely. Um, yeah, so it has an on tap. So right now we just do a blank function, empty function here. But if you want it to, let's say, uh, navigate to a different function, you would just put in your logic here, like whatever logic you have. So if you uh, use users tap on, you know, a menu items, it will just trigger this function on tap function. But right now, let's just put it empty. Uh, cool. So the child. So now. Right, we have coded this this box here, right? And now we're just gonna do the set um, again, right? It is a uh, let's do text, of course. And the text, right? So we have the uh, the data here, so it's just gonna be data title. Again, do two strings to be saved, and yeah, you can customize it. So let's just customize. I'll just do green. So color, let me give it green. Yeah. So again, add a constant front. So yeah, then we have a, a simple menu. So just a text button here. And then we also have a pop-up menu button and this is the title of the pop-up menu button. And then we have the pop-up menu items if you click, right? So yeah, and we just have to import to um, the menu handler. So let's just go import that widget fr menu and single pop-up menu requires data. So just pass that in. And yeah, so that's it.
So if the pop-up menu is true, right, we'll use a single pop-up menu. If it's false, we'll just use a single simple menu. And yeah, this is cool because again, if you have an, a couple of navigations you want to add, all you have to do is just go to the file and then add a couple of dictionaries and specify the titles or the name you want to show, the navigation name and the uh, the route name or point it to your URL. And then does it have pop-up menu? If it's true, then you have to specify the item. So yeah, this is pretty neat. So you don't have to, you know, um, create tons of files for each navigation button. So yeah, that bar is done. Um, see this, we haven't imported the package. So let's go ahead and import that. Widget, again, app bar, and then this is menu handler. Cool. Um, this one, top movers, right, I'm just gonna delete because we don't need it. Um, delete this. And yeah, and now we have a pretty good app bar widget here. We're done with app bar. So just a recap what we did. So we did a logo, right? Um, I'll just drink a logo uh, widget state list. And then we did um, this section here. And all this is wrapping the, in the role widget. Okay, so let's just go to the... Yeah, so logo and then this section here and then this menu handler will actually um, assess the data. If it's true, then we'll just do a pop-up menu. If it's false, uh, if it's true, yeah, pop-up menu, if it's false, single, simple menu, and we'll just use the correct widget. Okay, so now we're done and then we will, yeah, we're done with the app bar. And what we're going to do next is something called um, template or base template. So if you kind of, so this one is a homepage, right? And if you go to, let's say, um, live counter, you can kind of see that standard layout here. So you have an app bar, an app bar, and then just the content, the body, and then you have the you know, bottom banner here. So you can kind of see that the structure is always the same, right? So app bar, the body, body is kind of different based on um, the URL, right? But banner, right, always has this three parts here. So app bar, body, banner. And then if you go, I'm um, logging to app bar, body, banner, contact us, app bar, body, and you have a banner, right? Um, yeah, so we need to, uh, I will create a base screen, right? That base screen will have the layout here. So you, you will have an app bar, and then the body is just, um, yeah, body is just blank and then the bottom banner, right? And then all these other screens or uh, views will just use that base screen to build the body. And that way you don't have to specify the app bar, right? The app bar, the bottom banner, every time you want to create a new view. So yeah, let's just go ahead building the base screen. Cool, Kian, I'm just gonna pause one sec. I'm gonna start a new video, yep. new recording.